weapons. This Void Ray is coming out again. Would not be surprised to see this Void Ray triple base into fast fourth base again. It's just such an effective opening. Yep. <laughs> I really wonder what Serol's game plan is going to be. Because uh, I think if you mention six or seven bases to Serol now, I mean, Serol's not a man who curses. I've never heard him say a curse word in his life, but he may say something very mean to you. Because <laughs> I don't think he wants to see <laughs> Showtime on six or seven bases again, or himself for that matter. He's going to try to find a way to end this before we get there. Twilight Council is going to be the attack of choice here for Showtime. So he's switching things up. That's a very quick Twilight, uh -huh. which gives me the feeling that it might be resonating glaives. And it's going to be like, hi, Saro, I'm going to build a lot of target units. We should build macro. And then surprise, here are all the adapts with glaives. At least that's kind of what I'm expecting. But normally Saro is very good at figuring this kind of stuff out. And now we see Showtime marching across with the Adepts. Now, is this going to be a more aggressive play, or is this just still going to be a transition to a pretty quick fourth? Yeah, I don't think he thinks these Adepts are going to win the game, but I do think that Showtime is planning to get ahead with them. That's a funny shade. I don't know why we shaded there. Maybe that was a misclick, and he was supposed to shade towards the main base, and he could always decide to cancel it, but... Uh, so far, the Adepts not getting too much done, but hey, maybe the Adepts and Void Rays. I would think I would let that shade finish up. Adepts and Void Rays are going for it. Serral doesn't have wow. all of his units here. Look at this. Look at just the sheer power of all of these Adepts. I mean, the, the, the Roach speed is only about a third done. And at this point in time, Showtime has already gotten some good exchanges, but here comes Serral with more Roaches from the left. It's going to slowly wind up favoring the Zerg player in terms of the exchange. The Adepts, no matter how many you have, still just do not trade well with Roaches. Yeah, there's a couple of Queens left, and that is barely enough for Serral to deflect the Void Race. Maybe if, like at one point, since there were only three Queens left, if you then show up with double Void Ray and the Oracle, wouldn't have been so bad. Serral has the Infestation Pit finished up and decides to add Swarm Hulls. So it's going to be Roaches, Ooh. Queens, and Swarm Hulls in a very aggressive manner. But normally when Zork players go for this build, they're already kind of getting out on the map. They are the ones keeping the Protoss at home. You don't see this very often after we just saw 20 Adepts fight Roaches and Queens on the Zerg side of the map. And I mean, at this point in time, Showtime is really massing up a gigantic ground army. I mean, there's there's no even small attempt to try to secure a fourth. It's just all very, uh, you know, I don't want to say defensively minded, but just like pouring all the resources into getting as many ground units as humanly possible. How many gateways is this going to be? Ten? Yeah, ten gateways coming out. Now the fourth base starts. And Cyril is going to try to pressure this, but Showtime is going to have a horde of Protoss gateway units behind this. Yep, he's gonna have to cancel the Nexus though, does not cancel it, that's oh, a little no. bit unfortunate. And it was a very cute move, the two Void Rays checked in the bottom right side to see if Sarah was going up to four bases or not. And there was a drone that knew the Void Rays were coming, so it was hiding in the corner. Showtime turns around, Serral takes the hatchery immediately. Where are those Swarmos? That's the big question. Well, here's the first wave of Locust. This is going to be pretty difficult for Showtime to deal the Locust turn around oh. to fight the army instead. Interesting. I, I think it's a very nice play. I mean, one of the big weaknesses that you can have for Serral is whenever the Locusts are down, you do not have a good fighting force. So what do you do? You try to make sure the Locusts are spending as much of their time killing enemy Protoss units instead of Protoss structures. And here, the Queens at the front evaporate almost instantly. And all of a sudden, the Swarm hosts, very red-cheeked, do not have any Locusts to support. And the continuous reinforcements from Showtime are going to be enough to hold off this attack. Yeah, that was beautiful by Showtime. Fantastic force fields and also realizing when to fight. He knows about the Swarmos in the left side. Ah. He finds them immediately, drops a couple force fields, picks off two of them. Uh, the Mauer is playing so fine at this point. And Serral, even though he's got an army supply advantage, he's not really finding what he's looking for. I want to say he's not giving up, but the 10 gateway, Sean, you mentioned. Zealots coming in from every angle. Showtime is starting to look better and better here in game two. And I mean, the Immortals just punishing this armored composition. We still have the Swarm Host at the far left trying to make some magic happen, but it's like Showtime has the innate sense of when these units can possibly be spawning. And look at this, the slower to warp in units, the Archons that are incidentally better against the Swarm Host are already in the correct position. I mean, this is just divine defense from Showtime. 
Zero morphing all these roaches into ravages. This is a feeling he's even more committed than he already was. He does have those plus two missile attacks on the way. Corrosive Ball does not connect with the Void Race. The Queens are a little bit further behind. It is hard to engage armies with all these ravages though, right? It's like, ah, oh, you don't really want to go through the Corrosive Balls. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's again, the Ravagers are interestingly being used as like a nice delay and retreat friendly unit. And Cyril, wow! I mean, Showtime defended this move from Cyril multiple times. This run up into the main base. And just the one time Cyril doesn't have, excuse me, Showtime doesn't have a warp in ready, that's when Cyril strikes. And here suddenly we have the Locusts and the Roaches getting a good concave against Showtime. Suddenly, there's roaches on the natural expansion. Cyril has just been oh continuing God. to attack left and attack right. And I was spending minutes lauding how amazing Showtime's defense is. But Cyril seems to have found weakness and seems to have just microed and muscled his way forward. There is a war prism in the main base of Cyril. So Cyril is starting to lose a couple of drones. But I think that you are onto something, Sean. All of a sudden, Cyril does find an opening. Seems like we're going to have a very standard setup here. The Protosses, they love the Void Ray first, Sean. That was definitely different once upon a time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I feel like this is the Protoss version of, of getting Hellions, right? When you get Hellions, it just lets you feel so safe. You know, it's not necessarily that great in any direct engagement. Obviously, it deals bonus damage versus... Um, Obviously, deals bonus damage versus like Ravagers and Roaches and that sort of thing. But really, it's just the lack of anti-air that helps guarantee that you can get expansions up safely. It just feels so good. And, you know, following up with the Oracle to do some scouting, this is a very Showtime-esque opening. Because so often, um, openings have some type of pressure, some type of damage. And Showtime just seems so focused on denial. See, we see a bunch of Adepts coming out and then not moving out for a little bit. We see the uh, Void Ray coming out and not attacking, just kind of clearing things out. And now we see the Oracle coming out. Now we see the Adepts trying to do some damage. Just very, very patient. <laughs> when we say patient, he shades into Adepts, into a middle line that is protected by Queens and Zerklings. But I guess Showtime didn't really feel like he needed those Adepts anymore. Yeah, for a split second, Showtime already had a Twilight Council on the way, but he decided to cancel that. He's like, hmm, if it is taxi time, I better take this very serious, but he revelated it. So the Void Rays will once again start applying pressure to these Dropper Lords immediately, and at this point, it's a race against the clock. Uh, well, if this means we get another 38-minute game, I'm pretty sure people are excited. But let's see if that's actually going to be the case. We know that Sarah is going to be even more committed than he was before. But how the hell do you taxi four queens when there are four? Me, how the hell do you taxi against four void rays, right? No, stop picking oh. up queens. Just, just oh, walk, Sarah. Just, just walk. walk. It's not that far. Exactly. I mean, look at the patience with Showtime. He waited so long to use prismatic alignment. And I think that it was the perfect set of decisions because now... There is a single Adept here. There's shield batteries, but the Ravagers immediately begin going to town. And here now, the Queen count at six. So many transfuses. Hydralis Den being built behind in this third base is done. Rotterdam, look at this. It makes it look easy. Yeah, I actually think that Showtime is almost done because there were still Zerglings being dropped in the main base and in the natural as well. So it's not just the Nexus that is falling here. It's also the fact that Showtime is taking some economic damage behind all of this. And these Queens are still very, very healthy. Uh, Zero is down six workers though, so he may feel like he needs a little bit more. But I think there is a lot of opportunity for him to get a bit more. Because if you look at the energy and the health on these Queens, why the hell would he slow down? I think the play might be to just pick off the Ravagers. I mean, the Queens are just unkillable with this much energy right now. And suddenly, Serral is making this early Void Ray opening look terrible. I mean, this was an amazing defense from Showtime in the very first game. But here in game three, Serral comfortably does the same opening again, has killed off so many workers, 10 down and a third base. And Serral ain't done. Serral is building drones behind, getting Hydralisk range behind, getting ready to get a fourth base behind, and Showtime is still, still dealing with this Queen Ravager force. Yeah, and it's still so hard to pick up these Queens. There's a couple of transfusions left. The Void Ray count should normally be high enough at this point to finally clean this up. So we're going to be disengaging one or two more times. Maybe the Zellos can help Showtime to actually really make this the cleanup crew. 
Oh, yeah, now we already have Hydras being produced of a 63 <laughs> drone economy. I absolutely love the way that Saru executed his attack and still thought of the phase after this. Okay, well let's let's talk a little bit about what to do now as Protoss. You can't build any tech units or tech structures. You've lost your cybernetics core, so it's all slow zealot void ray from here on out. And you can apply pressure and recall, but I mean void rays get weaker and weaker and weaker the longer the game goes on. In fact, the late game they more like function as a support unit. Maybe they can pick off some queens here. Mm, yeah, getting any queen here is good, but with that number of hydras, I mean Serral just looks on point. Yep, and don't forget that Showtime cancelled his Twilight Council when the attack started. And now oh, he also right. lost his Cybercore, so he needs to rebuild the Cybercore to then build the Twilight, to then research Charge. I mean, that seems like it's going to take a very, very long time. And here we have the forward pylon without any warp bonus. Look at how long those Adepts take to warp in. Jeez, yeah, I know Adepts do bonus light damage, but... There comes a point where if you have queens and hydras, you just kill everything in small numbers. Yep, Saros counterattacking with a couple of zerglings, and Showtime has no units in position to protect this Nexus. It does have a lot of HP, so I guess the Oracle will be able to keep it alive, but it's very obvious that Showtime is looking for some damage with this very weird and almost random Protoss army that it's currently working with. Oh no, zerglings casually running into the main base. There is no shield oh. battery there. That's gonna hurt a little bit too. And it looks like it's Showtime just going for some desperation final attack. Or does Showtime think that he can actually win here? I mean, Adept Void Ray? What? Okay, sure, it looks like it's piercing forward. I, I guess there's only seven Hydralisks left turning on the Mega Beams to try to pick off that Spore Crawler as quickly as possible. But no, still too many Hydras, still too many Queens.